beacon of speech, does everything look like it's working, Ted Cooley? Yeah, I think so. Yay! Beacon of speech is back. This is beacon of speech number 100. We should have confetti coming down <laughs> from the ceiling and stuff. We were going to have Joe... Wait. Come along. We have asbestos coming down. Asbestos is raining down from Ted's uh, ceiling. We were going to have Joe join us, and that did not work out over Christmas. We cannot get on the same page as Joe. Maybe for Beacon of Speech number 101. <laughs> Ted, can you believe we did Beacon of Speech 100? I cannot believe it. Um, what is Beacon of Speech all about? It's all about free speech. At the end of the day, it's basically just me yelling at Ted. I, thought, Ted. I thought you were going to say maybe we could have Joe for Beacon, Beacon of Speech 1000. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. I'll tell you what, I'll take it. But uh, we wanted Joe, we didn't get Joe. And look, there's the glitches. <laughs> there's the glitches. Which goes back to problems with the computer. <laughs> which goes back to... Part of the reason we are semi-defeated, because things are not working with the computer today. Beacon of speech number 90, da, 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 I think it's 97. You know who's doing this? Could it be because Putin's not looking over us? Yes, I think he's mad. You know what? How did he... <laughs> I don't like the way you two operate. We are going to shut your broadcast down. Let's see if we can get him to stick up there. There you go, that's it. All right. Which, I was telling Ted that we need an equipment upgrade. So, Beacon of Speech 100. Is he saying? Does he always have that? Uh, I think it, we put it on the other side. I think we put it like that. <laughs> and, notice, to, we are not giving money to Putin. If you look at the sign, do you see what it says up there? <laughs> Giant Russian figurehead. Because technically, if it says Putin head, I think we have to pay him. You know what I mean? They have to pay residuals. Um, the whole point is, is that we're having bugs, glitches. It should be a celebration, but what we need is a cash infusion. <laughs> Maybe we should start a GoFundMe page. Give Fred and Ted money. Now, if we did that, you know what would happen? We probably wouldn't spend it on Beacon of Speech. We'd spend it on hookers and vodka. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, see, he knows what we would do. He's winking at us. Right? What did you say, hookers and vodka? Hookers and vodka. That's the oh, Russian way. I thought you said babka. Uh, that too. I don't even know what that is. Um, but uh, Beacon of Speech is basically me yelling about freedom of speech and Ted going, oh, <laughs> how does he trick me into doing this every week? You know what's been burning my I, ass? Did, did it glitch again? Yeah, it glitched again. <laughs> We're going to keep trying to keep going. We're going to see what happens. Do you know what's been bothering me over Christmas? What's really, really been bothering me? Uh, really, really, really been bothering me? And me and I, you are not on the same page with this. Um, no, wait a minute. Um, we are not on the same page. Did you mention this before? On the phone I did, yeah. Uh, well, go ahead. I forgot. What do we need to build on the Mexican border? No, the wall. The wall. You notice I'm drinking a Pepsi while wearing a Coke hat? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you like that? Um, the wall. Ted Coley, I already know your answer, but for the folks at home, Ted Coley, should we build the wall? Yes. I say no. No? Yes. I say no. Now, what do I have against the wall? Now, we're going to start with Ted Coley first, because mine is a long-winded answer. Why should we put a wall in Mexico, Ted Coley? We should put a wall in Mexico because although we want immigration, we do not want illegal immigration. Okay. We, now, we want immigrants. We just want to be able to weed out the good from the bad. Now, I am not the mainstream media. I am not here to sully Ted's good name because his argument is rational. Okay? Now, part of the problem in America today is Trump ran... Say, I'm going to build that wall. And he put his feet in the cement and said, I'm going to, you elected me, you, Ted Coley, elected me to build that wall. And God damn it, I'm going to build that wall. I'll <laughs> shut down the government until I get the wall. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I respect Trump that he said, elect me and I will build a wall. He was elected and now he said, God damn it, I'm going to build that wall. <laughs> I don't care what Fred Hunt says. I'm listening to Ted Coley. Ted Coley voted for me, and he believes in me. Okay? Now, 
So I respect Ted Coley, and I respect that Donald Trump is doing what he said. Okay? We all know that I did not vote for Donald Trump. I do not agree with the wall per se. Okay? And now here's where we get into the ticky-tacky nitty-gritty. Okay? Why doesn't Fred want the wall? Okay? Now, I agree with you there should be legal immigration, not illegal immigration. And the people coming from, especially El Salvador and Honduras, are some nasty, nasty people. Right? Trump ran. He says, Americans are not going to pay for that wall. Mexico is going to pay for a wall. Mexico said, go get bent. And so who's going to pay for the wall? Now, pretend like this is your house. Okay? Well, what? you do know what he means by Mexico paying for the wall. Oh, yes. Yeah. The renegotiated NAFTA. NAFTA. Right. <clears throat> now, if Donald Trump says, listen, we give you, I don't know how much aid we give him. Listen, we give Mexico? you. Mexico? Yeah. We give you $10 billion in aid. This year, we're going to give you $5 billion in aid. And we're going to build a wall. <laughs> I would be like, okay, you're in charge. You're in charge of the budget, just like at your house, Ted. If you want to build a fence around your yard, you don't have a fence. Or if I want to build a garage door. Right, or, or if you want to. Ted's had garage door issues this week. If you want to build a garage door, okay, that's your prerogative. You have to put it in your budget. Well, you know, we're not going to do this. If you could get your neighbor to pay for the garage door, you would probably be like, oh, hell yeah. I would rather have my neighbor pay for it than me pay for it. Okay? Same exact premise with Donald Trump. He says, I want Mexico to pay for a wall. You can trick NAFTA or turn NAFTA around so you get the $5 billion. I will even listen to that. Okay? But I do not want American money. $5 billion is a lot of money, no matter what you say. Right? And I don't mean you. I mean Putin. <laughs> I do not want to spend $5 billion on a wall because let's say Trump's reelected. Just argue with me, okay? Trump's reelected and he serves until the year 2024. And Trump steps down. Thank you, America. You know, I was the greatest president there ever was. I built the wall. I'll see you all in hell, you know, because it'll be like 78 or something. And all those people who hated me kiss my ass. <laughs> you know, you can't take me out of the history books. Right now, he steps aside. Next thing you know, um, Mitt Romney is running against uh, who's somebody in their fifties or sixties who's popular. Uh, on what side? Uh, Democrat side. Fifties or sixties? Yeah, fifties or sixties. Somebody who's in their fifties or sixties. Oh my god! And don't don't say uh, old people who will be dead by twenty twenty four. Sanders will be dead. Um, oh, let's see. What's that guy's name? Cory Booker. Cory Booker. Cory Booker. You know what Cory Booker is going to do? Cory Booker is going to run against Mitt Romney or whatever Republican there is. And you know what he's going to say? Well, the thing is, is Mitt Romney is only a year younger than Trump. So is he really? He, yeah. I thought he was like 10 years younger. No, okay. He's... Well, whatever Republican you pick, we're going to pick uh, Booker. What's his first name again? Cory, I think. Cory Booker. We're going to pick Cory Booker. Cory Booker is going to run on the Democrat side in 2024. What do you think he's going to run on? Uh, tear down the wall! <laughs> tear down the so wall! He's, he's going to be like uh, Reagan. He's going to be exactly <laughs> like Reagan. Tear down the wall! Okay? Now... The only difference is he'll be saying tear down our own wall. Yeah, tear down our own wall. Right? And whoever the Republican who's running... And, and again, I use Romney, but that's a bad example. Whatever... Uh, who, how old's Rubio? Rubio, Rubio's young. Okay, he's pretend like Rubio's young. probably like around our age. Rubio's going to come out and say, listen, the Trump built a wall. It's a waste of money to tear it down, and crime has gone down uh, 37%, and we've had less rapes, murders. The people from El Salvador can't get here, blah, blah, blah. The wall works. Uh-oh. Wow, that was weird. Yeah, it was. Okay. We're back. Did did I uh, did that take uh, our whole screen disappeared? So I don't know if that's work. So Rubio's gonna say crime went down thirty seven percent. Things are great. Blah blah blah. Yakety schmackety. Right. I think somebody's hacking us. Uh, I don't think. Uh, oh oh. <laughs> so anyhow, he's gonna run. Okay. Now, 
I can want a libertarian to Who run. Who would want to sabotage our show? Oh, uh, I don't know. No, nobody watches. <laughs> oh, our, our old manager. Our old manager. <laughs> you know his name, right? Today is his birthday. He's like, for, to, for my birthday, I want to shut down Beacon of Speech. And those guys aren't going to be yelling about me anymore because he's probably our one viewer. He's probably sending stuff it, in. It is his birthday today. Yeah, it's his birthday because we were going to talk about that beforehand. So he wants to shut down Beacon of Speech. The point is, is that say Rubio runs, and as much as I want a libertarian to win, libertarian's not going to win in 2024, right? So Rubio runs, and he's running against Booker, and Booker wins 48% uh, to 45%, right? As soon as Booker walks in, I'm tearing down the wall. I'm like, oh, my God. We spent $5 billion to put up a wall, and you're going to tear it down. And then, you know what's going to happen after he's done? Crime went back up, build the wall again. <laughs> and it's, it's just like at your house, okay? If you could get 80% of the people to say build the wall... You know, what right. they should, you know what they should do is make it like a retractable wall that goes <laughs> in and out of the ground. Yeah, like so a So that way if stadium. they change their mind, yeah, they could put it up, down, or... So this country is so divided by the right and the left, there's no way in six years that... And let's just hypothetically say that uh, Rubio does win. Rubio wins in 2024, and he's or like president. when they see, you know, you'll have it down, and you'll see like a herd coming. Right, right yeah. before, oh, here they right come! Right they the wall they smash into it. <laughs> I read something, and they 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 were like, "Walls work." They're like, "When's the last time you saw a dragon in China?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, don't, don't don't start with me." Because even if Rubio wins in 2024, in 2032, right, uh, who's that horrible uh, socialist from New York, Ocasio Cortez? Yeah. She's going to be like, tear down the wall. <laughs> so that wall, it might last two years, it might last six years, it might last 12 years, but that wall is not going to be here in 100 years. You see what I'm getting at? And to me, that's just flushing $6 billion down the toilet. For or five billion dollars. For five billion dollars, you might as well just have people at the border shooting illegal aliens as they come in. You see what I'm getting at? Now people are screaming, "Don't shoot the illegal aliens!" <laughs> no, the wall's better, right? So, but you have to have some sort of solution. For years and years, uh, John McCain, one of the biggest problems we have is all the illegal immigration coming across Arizona. John McCain's dead. What did John McCain do to solve the problem of illegal immigration? Nothing. Nothing. Okay? Because he was a politician and, again, John, young John McCain was a war hero. Okay? There's no two ways about it. Old John McCain was a politician. How do I get reelected? How do I get reelected? How do I get reelected? He didn't solve the problem of illegal immigration in Arizona. He didn't. Okay? Now, you could say, oh, well, his hands were tied and blah, blah, blah. But that's what Trump is saying. Trump is saying, I'm not a politician. I told him I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall. Okay? So, me and you are splitting hairs because I don't necessarily disagree with you. To me, it is flushing $5 billion down the toilet. But, and I read this too. There is a poor minority student, okay? He was a minority student, and he was talking, and I was surprised how eloquent he was, okay? And this, you know, from my other job. And I heard, overheard him saying, he goes, why do we go to Pluto? Why do we go to Saturn? I am never going, and I meant this kid, right? I am never going to Saturn or Pluto or whatever, so space travel is a waste of money. Why can't we have more nice stuff in America instead of sending money to Pluto, right? You, that's just flushing money down the toilet. And at first I was mad at this kid because I'm like, you know what? You should be learning about Pluto. You shouldn't be bitching about spending money, right? But the back of my head, he did not. He, he wasn't smart enough to come up with that on his own. You see what I'm saying? Mom or dad said... Instead of sending money to Pluto, Donald Trump should be giving us more money. You see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So in their mind, we are flushing money down the toilet 
by having a space program. You get where I'm going at? Mm -hmm. So to me, wasting $5 billion on a wall is just flushing it down the toilet. But how often do we flush money down the toilet in America? All the time. All the goddamn time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> okay? If I took out how much money we spent on A, B, C, and D, your your head would turn gray. Your your hair would look like my beard <laughs> or Putin's hair. Right? You'd be like, oh my god, I'm going I'm going gray. Okay? So that's why I don't want a wall. But I will listen to you and I will not insult you for wanting a wall because your logic is sound. Right? All countries in the whole world, you know, they want the best and brightest from other countries. You know, we want the doctor from Norway. We do not want the bottom dwellers and the criminals from mm -hmm. your country. And it, it, it's the tale as old as time, right? England, 200 years ago, what did they do with their criminals? Sent them to Australia. Sent them to Australia. Australia, there wasn't anybody to turn them away, so they're like, oh, I guess they're Australians now, hmm. right? So, tale as old as time. We want your good people to come to our country. Screw those other people. We don't want those other degenerates. My whole argument is the cost, the cost of the wall, okay? And they're just going to tear it down. If you built that wall and you said that wall is going to be there for 200 years and Donald Trump put in self-destruct mechanisms in the wall so if a Democrat comes and tries to tear down the wall, blows our hands off, <laughs> okay? I'll be like, okay. <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll go with that then because nobody's tearing down the wall. You see what I'm getting at? Now... So you're strictly looking at it from a money standpoint? I am looking at it from a money standpoint. Because, again, we, um, my dad said this just yesterday. Saw my dad yesterday. He goes, Mr. Trump, my dad calls him Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump is running the country like a business, right? What business wants to, oh, well, what business wants to spend $5 billion only to have, you, you see what I'm getting at? So, but again, there, there's more to the story, but I wanted to talk to... Now, I, your dad likes Trump, <coughs> right? Oh, my dad, he, Mr. Trump's doing a great job. That's what... Uh, listen, <laughs> this is the disconnect I have, okay? I follow a lot of libertarian sites and, you know, I read a lot, right? And my family, everybody from my age down is like Donald Trump is the Antichrist, okay? Everybody from my age up, Mr. Trump is going to save this country. Uh, my in-laws, my parents, uh, older aunts and uncles. I, like, I'm the middle for some reason. And I talk to cousins and stuff who are in their 30s who cry when they talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is uh, taking America straight to hell. I see, see the tears. You don't understand how bad Trump is, right? And so I'm like, well, listen, here's what's going on. Trump is running the country like a business, and you're getting screwed. The problem is every business in America is like that. The people on the top are doing great, and the people on the bottom are getting screwed. Right? Now, so that's why I'm like, I, I, don't, know what to, I don't know what to tell either one of you. Donald Trump is running the country like a business. And I try to take the emotion out of it. Do I wish he wasn't the president? Yes, I do. But I understand why you voted for him, and I understand why other people voted for him. Because they were sick of the crawling socialism, which was coming from Obama. And crawling socialism is what Donald Trump is still has the constraint, and we're going to get back to Trump in a second. Donald Trump still has the constraints of the Constitution kind of handcuffing him a little bit, right? Why can't Trump build the wall? Because Congress won't do it. Right? Mm -hmm. So Donald Trump says, how can we circumvent things so I can still build the wall? Congress says, you can't. If we don't give you money, you can't build the wall. All right? So they're fighting. But Donald Trump, and this is the latest thing, Donald Trump says that he can override the Congress. How can he do that? Do you know? How can he override the Congress? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I don't know. Is it something to do with the, the military? Have the he can declare a national emergency. That people are pouring over the borders. 
and violating national security and declare a national emergency, spend five billion dollars. They basically give them a blank check, right? Now is that is that like an executive order? And that's where I'm going. And any, you anytime you know. do an executive order, then the next guy can just reverse it. Right. And but 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 this is the whole thing. When Obama Barack Obama used an executive order, people on the left are like, he can do it. He can do it. And the right is like, nobody's used more executive orders than Barack Obama. Right? And so the left is like, oh, well, too bad. Not thinking four years ahead, what if Donald Trump gets elected? Mm -hmm. Donald Trump wants an executive order, and they're like, oh, what if Donald <laughs> Trump's a thing? And they're constant. Your guy did it four yeah. years ago. Yeah. Your guy was spinning off it. We were talking about the executive order to change the name of Denali. Just the last episode. Now, Donald Trump would use an executive order much bigger than what Barack Obama did, but it's the precedent that was set. And they're like, oh, Barack Obama never spent $5 billion on an executive. It doesn't matter. Because, again, to me, and you could argue with me if you want, this creeping socialism is what's going to get America. It's not going to be Donald Trump. Okay, Donald Trump in two or six years will be gone, and then the other guy will balance things out and stuff. Right? Well, you know what's funny is that, Go ahead. and I don't know if this is accurate, but I heard that, you know, even though the economy is doing very well over mm -hmm. the last what couple of years, they mm -hmm. said the deficit this past year was still a trillion dollars. Yep, yep, still over a trillion. So it's grown, grown, grown. Donald Trump said he would take down the deficit. He can only do one thing at a time. Even I understand that. Donald Trump is saying, well, listen, I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to waste $5 billion. Congress is going to give it to me, right? But again, he's splitting hairs, talking around the problem. Now, me and you can debate this because this is America, right? And it's great that we are friends and we have free speech and you can defend Mr. Trump and I can say why he's wrong, okay? You know when that doesn't happen anymore, when socialists are in charge, okay? All these socialists getting elected to Congress is scaring the crap out of me, okay? Because this Alexandria Cortez character. Mellencamp. Well, yeah, whatever the hell her name is. <laughs> I wrote two articles about her on break because what she wants to do costs more than there is money. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? What's wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Sorry to call. You gotta spend money to make money. Yeah. What what I don't understand is that all the liberals and all the people on the left is like she is the future. Okay, okay, okay. Let's say she's the future. Take what she wants to do and put a price tag on it and say how we can do it. And they're like, well, cut the fence and and uh, tax the rich. Okay, okay. That that will cover maybe a third of what she wants to do. How are you gonna do the other two thirds? we can raise taxes a little. You know what? In order to do what she wants to do, you have to tear through socialism and go straight to communism. Now, if we are a communist nation under uh, czar uh, no, Alexandria... No, what, is, what are some of the things like uh, free college and... Free college, for, uh, Medicare for all. Medicare for... Um, I'm trying to think of all this stuff off the top of my head. Uh, free college... Um, free health care. Uh, one of her other platforms is um, free housing. Oh, uh, that's, housing, that's awesome. Housing is a human right. So everybody gets minimal housing or minimum well, housing. Some of us already had that. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the other things that we're going to... Uh, the, the main one was the, the health care, the way she wanted to set up. Like, it's not single pair, but it's basically single pair. And... Um, so that, that eats a ton of your money. Um, she wants to basically, um, what was, oh, geez, I had the list. I didn't put the list in front of me, Ted. Is she, but uh, is she also guaranteeing a job? Like, guaranteeing, like, a... Yes, a living wage. Job with a living wage. Nice. So, uh, but, but again, when you put the price tag on it, say everybody gets a job. So 5% of the people who are unemployed get a minimum wage job. That's not a living wage, right? So let me ask you a question. Ted Coley, you were... I mean, basically what she's saying is that 
she just wants the government to take over the economy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the summary. Right. But uh, let's use living wage as an example. Okay. 5% of the population, they're, they're unemployed. We're going to give them a living wage. Okay. We give them a living wage. But you work at McDonald's, Ted. Okay. Are you going to keep working at McDonald's for minimum wage or you quit? Are you going to quit and get the living wage job? You see what I'm saying? Mm. Well, you're, you're going to be like, well, screw McDonald's. I'm going to go work over here for the living wage. And then all of a sudden, you all these minimum wage jobs are going away. And they're like, oh, well, just push up the minimum wage to a living wage. Like, none of her answers have real world solutions. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So when you put price tags to, you know, free college for all, uh, living wage, minimum housing, blah, blah, blah. When you put a price tag on all that, right? All of a sudden, there's more money that exists. And she's like, well, Sweden does it. Well, that's not exactly what Sweden does because they only have $300 million. Or um, 300 million people, right? And back to the, let's say, uh, you know, everybody gets, you know, something for nothing. People who are barely scraping by, okay, are they going to continue to work at minimum wage jobs, barely scraping by, or are they going to quit their jobs and go to the guaranteed minimum jobs? Mm. You see what I'm getting at? So the only way her proposals will work by math, using math. Now, I'm not trying to be a jerk, okay? I would love for her to come back and say, you know what? Fred Hunch is a big a-hole, <laughs> right? All you have to do is A, B, and C, and everything is funded. And you're like, oh! Well, let's see that map. You, uh, Ted, um, when you were a young man, did you vote for Ross Perot? No, I did not. But you remember the graphs. Uh, yeah. All we have to do <laughs> is move this money over here and this money here, and they just don't want to do it. It's very clear. If you look at the graph, right? You remember that? Yeah. Right? Look at the graph. We can do it. We don't want to do it. I will do it. I will make this graph, you know, sing and hum and spin around and confetti will shoot out. And so that's what makes me mad about her is because I say, what about the substance about what she's saying, right? And the left is like, no, she's awesome. She has great energy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. She's a beautiful girl, right? Say, Fred, would you... If you were single, because I'm not single, I'm married, okay? If you were single, would you like to date her? Oh, yeah, she's a beautiful young lady. But it's not about whether she's a beautiful young lady who dances around or not. It's about what she's saying, and what she's saying is dangerous or bankrupt America. Next thing you know, we'll all be talking Chinese. The Chinese will be like, we love her. We're communist. You're communist. We're all communists. Everything's, getting, everything's working great. And we'll be in the basement locked up somewhere. There won't be a big in a speech. But Ted will be like, that's, I... That's going to get more people to vote for. Yeah, yeah. Ted, Ted's going to yeah. Ted's gonna be super pissed. Me and him are in the dungeon together, like the we'll middle ages. chained up to... The... Yeah, we're chained up to the walls. And Ted's like, God damn it, I knew I should I should not have let you do big in a speech. Will Joe me. be there too? Yeah. Joe, Joe's going to have other problems. Joe is getting to the age, I did not know this, um, Joe's father passed away um, while we were working with him. But Joe's dad, he was not old, what was he, 52, 55, when he passed away? You know, I'm not, I'm not he sure. was in his 50s. He was in his 50s. So I think Joe, and again, I don't mean to speak out of turn, but I think Joe might be feeling the... Hey, my dad didn't live that long. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he's worried about himself. So he could distance himself. He goes, I always hated those guys at Beacon of Speech. He won't be in the basement with us. Yeah, um, we, we brought this show to a grinding halt. Joe's poor dad died at an early age. So. I think he was, um, I, I think he was like around 60 or so. Was it 60? I think so. But the point is, is that socialism is dangerous. And again, if you can make socialism work, you can't just tax the rich. You can't just say, that rich guy over there, I'm going to take his money. Okay, well, you just solved hunger for a thousand people. What about the other, you know, 299 million? Oh, the math says they'll get fed, you know. 
I'm sorry, this whole socialism, this whole socialism thing's been just like, it's been eating me alive because um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and I should write it down because I always butcher her name, okay? She's like, no, no, just like Sweden, right? Just do it like Sweden, 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 Sweden. We're just like Sweden. No, no, it won't work like Sweden because you know what's happened? Sweden is, what, about the size of Indiana population-wise, right? And you know what's in the middle of Sweden? What do they got, about 10 million people? Yeah, I think so. So they're the population of Indiana. And when you think of Swedish people, do you think of white people, black people, Hispanic people? White people. White people, right? So they all get along, right? You have multiculturalism in America, right? And what will happen is as soon as you do, so, as soon as you bring in socialism, the whites will be like, we're getting screwed. The Hispanics are getting a better deal. Hmm. And then the Hispanics will be like, oh, well, the whites got a better deal for 200 years. And then the blacks will be like, well, screw them both. It's our turn. We've been waiting in line. They brought us here on slave boats. You see what I'm hmm. saying? Whereas the Swedes are like, oh, well, we're, all, we're all Swedes. Right? And the media plays the race war card. At, how many times do you turn on the news, um, uh, black teen shot by white cop, um, white woman shot, shot by black teen. You see what I'm mm. saying? Every single day is racial division. Every single day, both sides, not just one side, both sides. You know, I will read one story on CNN and then literally it will not be covered on the blaze at all. And then I'll read a story on the blaze and it's not covered by CNN at all because it doesn't fit their narrative. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm telling you, socialism will help bring the race war. Okay? Yeah. Oh, no. No, it won't. Everybody will be equal. Well, Rush Limbaugh would say, yeah, everybody's equally poor, like in yeah. Venezuela. Yeah. Equally miserable. And again, America is not Sweden. It's too big. The math does not work. And so that's why when I'm like, oh, the wall, the wall, the wall, you know, the math doesn't work, you know. Now, do you mind if we go back to the wall again? No. Okay. I read this online. I don't want to give up who told it to me. Do you know about sex, tra sex trafficking in America? A, a little bit. A little bit? Okay. You do not have a woman in the basement, correct? No. Okay. I wrote, read an article, and it said, in order to stop sex trafficking, you need to build that wall. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, gee. That wall will not stop sex trafficking. There's sex trafficking here, there. Uh, if we went to Cleveland, we could probably find some examples if we just shook the bushes a little bit, okay? That wall ain't going to do crap, okay? Either, listen, either build the wall or don't build the wall. But don't build it and tear it down a couple years later. And don't say, we need the wall for sex trafficking because sex trafficking ain't stopping with that wall. That wall ain't going to fix it. Either say, I want that wall or I don't want that wall. And like I said, I don't care. I'm going to spend, you want to spend $10 but billion. Dollars. But do you think it will reduce it? Oh, the, the uh, immigration? Sex, oh, yeah. The, the sex trafficking. Yeah. If yeah. you build a wall. Oh, sex trafficking, no. No, I think that'll, I think that'll stay the same. Immigration, I think it will slow down immigration because um, people are lazy, right? There's no wall. You run across the desert, okay? There's a big wall. You're like, well, I ain't getting across that. <laughs> Right? Now, now, people who are intrepid are still, people who want to get in America are still going to get in America. Right? But again, if you, if you say, I want to spend $10 billion on the wall, and we're going to put landmines, we're going to put barbed wire, and we're going to have, you know, we're going to make it electronic, and, you know, it's going to, sh it's going to <laughs> motion detector, shoot people as you go. Okay? If that's what you're going to do, that's fine. Okay? Then do it. Just don't do it for, don't half-ass it and do it for two or six years. Mm -hmm. We are going to put this thing so far in the ground <laughs> that in 10,000 years they're going to be like, what the hell were they thinking in America? Building this wall that's literally in the middle of nowhere. I still see a retractable wall. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, I had an outline for today and I couldn't get on the internet so I couldn't access it. There was like four things on it, and I'm trying to remember what, what else was on there because creeping socialism was one. It's been driving me crazy, and Trump was one. 
But I'm trying to think what else was on my list. Well, I do know that you told me you wanted to talk about the wall, which is what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Was one of them the best and the worst of uh, 2018? Oh, yeah, but I was going to write an article about that. I didn't. Again, I didn't write that down because I had it on the outline. What happened is, let me tell you the quick story. Before me and Ted started, okay, um, I went to go on the internet to, to get the outline and then to write it down, right? For some reason, it wasn't letting us on the internet, which I don't know why. So we just started because I knew we were going to talk about the wall, and I have been all hyped up about this stupid wall, okay? And... Good, bad, and different. I'm like, uh, okay, okay. You do you want to call me out on my BS? What? Call me on my BS. Say I think you were. I call BS. Uh, I, BS. Okay. Okay. I'm getting my tax refund on February first. Okay. Now, if that government is not open to refund my money, I'm going burn stuff down. <laughs> okay. I want my tax refund. Okay. Now. Did you already file? No, but I'm going to file, like in two weeks. As soon as I can file, I got money coming back, okay? File, 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 get my money, right? So I am a horrible, horrible, self-righteous American who wants my money because that's why I roll because I hate socialism, okay? I want my money. If the government shut down, and this is the ruse, if the government shut down, they will accept your money, Ted. I don't know if you ever have to pay taxes at IRS time or if you get money back. But if you want to pay, you can pay now. And they will process your thing. They won't do your tax return, but they'll accept your money. Mm -hmm. They will not give you a refund because the government shut down. Is that true? That's one of the things yes. that this will affect? Yep. So I will not get my tax refund as long as the country shut down. Now, another thing about the wall, and this is... You See, now that's the thing that's going to tip the, tip yeah. the scales. Now, the that's, other that's, th that's going to be like, remember in that movie Airplane, where the, where the flight attendant comes back and says that uh, the plane's going to crash and everybody's just sitting there. Oh. And then she says, we're also out of coffee, and yeah. they start fighting. Yeah, they start screaming. Ah! <laughs> <coughs> and, and that's the thing. Now. Just like the sex trafficking, I don't think the sex trafficking will um, be stop with the wall. I just don't, okay? But let me tell you something else. Where else do we have to build a wall, Ted? You'll get a kick out of this. Where else do, what, this country? Yeah. Where else do we have to build a wall? Yeah, where do we have to build a wall? I remember one of the other topics. Where else do we have to build a wall? Is it in this country? Yep. I I don't I don't know. Around Yosemite. See, I would have never gotten that. Okay, well no. It's a trick question. Okay. Why do we have to build a wall around Yosemite? Uh I don't know. People are dying. <laughs> I read this on CNN. And again, just like the person who said we have to build the wall to stop sex trafficking, which was BS. CNN has come out and said, we need the government open because people are dying in our national parks. Because, you didn't hear about this? No. <laughs> this is funny. I mean, if people weren't dying, it would be funnier. But people are dying in our national parks, Ted. You know why? Because of the shutdown, the park rangers aren't working. Okay? So what's happening is people are going to Yosemite and other national parks... And be like, oh, there's no park rangers. I'm going to hang out over this cliff. Oh! <laughs> three people. Three people died this past weekend because there were no park rangers. One was at Yosemite. One was at uh, Grand Canyon National Park. And one, oh, jeez, I can't remember the third so one. Again, I had it written words, down. If, the, if those rangers were working, if those rangers, they would be like, hey, get away from that cliff. Or, yeah, yeah. So, so CNN, people can't figure that out on their own. Yeah, so CNN's angle is... Trump killed these people. <laughs> I'm being serious. I'm, Trump killed these people because the park rangers were off, right? And then I read another article. You know the Washington Monument, right? Mm -hmm. They took a picture of the Washington Monument, right? Picture on top of the Washington Monument. 
And then they took a picture of the bottom of the Washington Monument, right? What's at the bottom of the Washington Monument, Ted Coley? I don't know. Garbage. Like a rock concert happened, right? Because the, city, the rangers at the Washington Monument aren't picking up garbage because they're non-essential government employees. Right. So people are like, again, we're going to use the analogy of our house. Oh, well, mom and dad aren't home. We'll, we'll just keep throwing garbage <laughs> on the floor. So there's literally yards and yards of garbage around so garbage cans. What I'm getting from this is that people need constant supervision. Yeah, which goes back to where does the socialism stop? Yeah. Like, if you saw a pile of garbage at the Washington Monument, would you just be like, oh, I'll just throw it in that other <laughs> pile of garbage, like an a-hole? Or would you be like, I, I am sorry for coughing. My throat's just really raw today. Or would you say, oh, you know what? I'm going to keep my gar garbage in a bag, and I'm going to throw it away at McDonald's when I go get a cheeseburger. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, so... I don't blame Donald Trump that people are a-holes and throwing their garbage. Mm. And I don't blame Donald Trump that somebody fell off, fell off a cliff at, at, the, uh, at the Grand Canyon. But again, CNN is like, you don't understand. Trump's killing people. Mm. It's like, your argument's horrible too. Mm -hmm. Because to, to, the, to the left, Trump is the devil. And it's like, I, there, there's no way you can blame Trump on that idiot who leaned over the ledge and f fell over at the Grand Canyon. Because I had a friend, excuse me, he worked at National Parks in Kentucky, okay? So how many times when the Rangers are working do they have to yell at people to get away from them? Oh, probably every single day. <laughs> every single day. I had a friend. He, and like I said, these are adults, right? Yeah, they're, they're adults. <laughs> it's not like they're seven years old. Yeah. But that, that, that's the whole thing. The government has to treat some people like kids. But um, anyhow, um, hmm. what was I going Oh, my friend, he worked at, uh, um, what was it? Uh, Mammoth Cave National Park System in Kentucky. And he used to say all the time, and this gets back to the fence. He goes, listen, Fred, there's literally thousands of acres of caves, Right? And he goes, we can't, we can't stop people from coming into the national park in the middle of the night. Even if we're, like, park closed, the locals can still come in. Do you want to hear a good story about um, um, the national park? Yeah. What would happen, and this is Kentucky. Again, this is the backwoods, right? The people in the backwoods of Kentucky, they'd be like, oh, holy cow. We want to grow pot, right? But we don't want... We don't want the government coming in and busting down our doors and taking all of our pot. We want to grow pot and not get caught, right? So my friend, the park ranger at the Mammoth Cave Parks, said that the locals who knew it really well, they would, like, pick a mile marker, and then they would GPS, and then they would grow pot in the middle of the woods, and then they would harvest it in the fall in the middle of the night. And my friend, one of his jobs was to go find the pot, pull it out before... The locals came and throw it on the fire and burn it up. Hmm. And he goes, well, that was the best fire of the year, right? But they couldn't stop people from coming to the national park in the middle of the night. They couldn't. And he goes, Fred, what are we going to do? Build a fence around the national park? And it's the same thing about Yosemite. Park, park shut down. What are we supposed to do? Build, build a wall around Yosemite to keep the people out there going to keep coming. If there's no rangers, they said, I think it was Yosemite, where they said there's literally that... That the, the bathrooms are closed, but they, there's no locks on the bathroom doors because it's a national park. They're, like, open, and people are, like, shitting, and the shit is, like, overflowing and just coming out of the restrooms. Like, you would be like, I don't think I'm going to go in that restroom that's full of shit. Excuse my French, right? And so you can't lock the national parks. You can't stop people from going to the national parks. Maybe we should. Maybe we should build a wall around the national parks. We're closed. Is, uh, is, is Yosemite, is that the one in California? That's up by Colorado and Wyoming. Oh, okay. I think it's Wyoming. I don't think it's Colorado. But no matter what, it's no matter what national park you pick. What Just am I like, thinking of? Yellowstone? Uh, I don't know. Where's our... Uh... Oh, oh, where's our... Where, we have a globe. <laughs> I wonder if it'll be on where, where, Yeah, our low-tech globe. 
Where is... Oh, jeez, oh. Ted, I can't see that. Even... I, no, my no, eyes no. are better than yours, but you, I don't think you can see that either, Ted. If I had my phone, I'd put, where's Yosemite? Yeah, I can't see that. I'm not even looking in the right place. I'm looking in, like, Mexico. <laughs> no, no, it, I, I, I'm positive it's in that corner of Wyoming. Yeah, I can't see. I'm only stopped because we are glitching again, and I'm watching my face... Because I don't know if the globe movement... <laughs> I has, saw that. Like, it, it glitched <laughs> when we moved the globe. And then all of a sudden, like, if we don't move too much, <laughs> it's okay. So I'm holding still to see if it, it catches up. So does it look like it's catching up? Um. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it looks like it's still freezing. We think we got it? Ted, this is what I'm talking about. We need a cash infusion for Beacon of Speech. Ted, we might have to end it because I think I think the globe broke our feed. Uh, what was it? The possession of Emily Rose or whatever. You know, this is probably better than our show. We can play with sound effects. I noticed Putin hasn't moved, though. Yeah, P Putin's doing good. That's what I get for bringing other things on camera. <laughs> All right, so anyhow, so people are... So dead. once this starts, does it just get worse? Uh, usually, it calms down, but it seems like today it's getting worse. So we might have to end it. We might have to end here, because soon it'll just turn off. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're screwed. We're screwed. We should never brought the globe on. We, you should know from memory where the national parks are. Yeah, put the glasses on Putin. Oh, I don't look so bad there because you can't see the gray. Look at <laughs> Four eyes, Putin. <laughs> All right, I think we're done, Ted. <laughs> I thought we were going to do about an hour. It looks like we're going to get about 45 minutes in. So number 100 has been emblematic of Beacon of Speech. Me yelling. <laughs> glitches. Things not well, working? It seems like it's stopping now. Is it? I think it might be. Oh, we'll keep trying. We'll see if we can keep going. Um, so anyhow, um, I do remember, I did want to talk a little bit about classic rock. That was something else on my list while I was looking at the face. Now, do you know why Fred hates corporations? It has to do with classic rock. That's the reason? or that's no, no, no. Do you know why... Why Fred Hort hates corporations, but it has to do with classic. Rock. Oh, okay. Um, no. Let me ask you some historical questions. Some. Are questions. you familiar with the song "Cover of Rolling Stone"? Some hysterical questions. <laughs> yes, I am. Do you know who sang that? Um, you know what? I I don't know. Who is it? The band was called Doctor Hook, and I did yeah, not know. See, that. I. Didn't know that. So they sang Cover of the Rolling Stone. And the whole song, it's it's historic. They're like, just put me on the cover of the Rolling Stone. A couple of good old boys singing rock and roll. Wanted to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. Now, I did not know that was Dr. Hook. And that is because in the late 70s, Dr. Hook had some of the worst soft rock songs I have ever heard in my life. Ever. They're terrible. Right? And look at the shirt I have on. Yeah, Rolling Stone magazine, and that's what reminded me too. So, the guy got on the cover, I believe it was the year after that song was, it was like a top five hit in America. And you know what song I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? If we had more money, we could play it in the background and stuff. Yeah, the cover on the Rolling Stone. Yeah, you know. So, the guy who sang that song, he died. He died last week. Okay. Okay. Now, the name of the band was Dr. Hook? The name of the band was Dr. What's, Hook. What's the guy's name? Oh, uh, I forgot his name. Ted, you were killing me. <laughs> I wish I could remember his name. But he, all, he, he got in a car accident, so he had an eye patch, okay? And he wore a cowboy hat, right? But they said the eye patch, thought, people thought he was Dr. Hook. But it was just a coincidence that he had the eye patch and he looked like 
you know, hook from Peter Pan. It was just a coincidence. Which I'm like, that's a weird coincidence, right? But the point of my story is he died last week, right? Now, who's on the cover of the Rolling Stone on your shirt? I don't know. It is Rage Against the Machine. Now, even if Rage Against the Machine is not your favorite band, you would agree that they are rock and rollers. Would you say that's true? Mm -hmm. Today, who's on the cover of Rolling Stone when the, when the guy who sang cover of the Rolling Stone died? You would think it would be the guy who sang cover of Rolling Stone because mm -hmm. it's ironic, mm -hmm. right? Who's on? Who's on now? Yeah, who's on when the uh, guy who sang? Uh, the guy from Doctor Who sang it? Uh, I don't know, Bob Dylan? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Which goes to why I hate corporations. You would think at some corporate level, maybe the most famous song about our magazine, that guy died. We should maybe put that on our cover because he's singing about the cover of the Rolling Soap. Rolling Soap magazine is like, who died? Taylor <laughs> Swift is awesome. She has a new special on Netflix. Let's put her on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Which is why corporations suck. Okay. Because at some level, they had to say, Taylor Swift is very popular with the young people. Taylor Swift has a new concert video on Netflix. We're going to put her on and somebody say, hey, 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 what about this guy from Dr. Hook? He is old news. We don't care if he helped build the magazine. Now, people are rolling stone are like, he didn't help build the magazine. But that song is iconic. When you think of that song, you think of rock and roll. You didn't know it was Dr. Hook. You don't know the guy's name. I don't know the guy's name. But you know the cover of the Rolling mm, Stone. Yeah. Right? He made that... He made the song iconic. And he made the Rolling Stone iconic. Mm -hmm. Right? And they did not care. <laughs> They're like, oh, he's another old rocker. They die all the time. Off you go. Into the abyss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, Fred's a jerk, okay? So Fred's like, you know, Dr. Hook sucked. You know, don't put him on the cover. I'll listen to that argument, okay? Because some of those songs from the late 70s were, they, they were terrible. Now, do you, uh. They made my ears bleed. Do you know the names of any of them? Oh, if, when we're done here, I'm going to try and get the, but you I know, think one was like not... Sexy Eyes. Ugh. I don't know if I know that. Oh, you know what? We're we're gonna at, when this is over, we're gonna get down on the internet, and I'm gonna show you. And uh -huh. when you see it, when I you wouldn't see, bet on that. You're yeah. <laughs> you're gonna go. Oh my God, Fred, that is terrible. So, but so the whole point of my story is when this glitch fest is over. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, glitch fest, uh, glitch fest one hundred. I'm writing that down. That's gonna be our glitch fest one hundred. So, but like I said, when we get our cash infusion, we'll look at these as the good old days. And Ted, you'll be like, you remember the good old days when nobody complained? We just worried about people complaining. Now people are complaining in real life. You know, I was, I've been thinking about what your friend said. And I'm not going to say his name. Oh, you mean building a fence around a park? No, no. About, uh, he, he listened to like one of our shows. Oh, yeah. He was like, I don't know how you guys you know, can say the things you say. Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because no one listens. <laughs> That's how we could say it. And I've been thinking about that. I'm not, <laughs> honestly, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm like, why? What do we say? That was so well, that's the whole thing. <laughs> this is why I say every day. The show, again, to me, the show does not work with me screaming in the camera. Okay? Because me screaming in the camera <laughs> only works for so long because then you're just a crazy person on yeah. a crate and a megaphone. Yeah. You know who I hate? Socialist! Socialist! Right? Yeah, it, anytime you're doing something like this by yourself, it just you just turn into like Charlie Sheen. Like, yeah. you know, winning. Yeah, winning! <laughs> winning! Charlie Sheen, yeah, you know, you shouldn't be banging hookers. Uh, what are you talking about? Winning! I'm winning, winning, winning! You know, you have to counterbalance. Because if it wasn't for you, I would still be talking about the Mammoth Cave Parks and I'd be like, oh, I remember the Mammoth Cave Parks. And you'd be like, oh my God. So I try to gauge what's going on and I try not to lose you. But sometimes I know you're like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> right? But again, what people, I, I see it every day. And we're going to go back to the wall. Okay? People are like, people who support Trump and want the wall are just racists, okay? Mm -hmm. 
And they're just, they're not. People have real worries about immigration, yeah. right? And they're like, oh, because you watch Fox News, and Fox News reports on all the uh, uh, Mexican immigrants who come and kill people. Well, do you think that's a problem to me? That's news. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I respect your opinion. Well, the other side, I think they know that the way to get their their point across is to accuse somebody of being a racist because they know that'll shut them up. And they, right. I don't think they necessarily believe that. Well, again, I you know what I'm saying. It's like they know that they, they'll just they can shut <coughs> people down. You know. I used to like Glenn Beck. I used to listen to him a lot. Okay. But now he's he's over the edge and blah, blah, blah. But when he was younger, to me, he was somebody who was open to listen to the left. Oh, listen to, listen to over guys on the right. And now he... You know the Blaze got sold, right? Um, when did that happen? Oh, just a couple weeks ago. They got bought by somebody else. He was running out of money. He was bleeding money worse than Beacon of Speech was bleeding money. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and some big conservative guy, I, I want to say Mark Levine, does that sound right? Mark Levin? Mark Levin, we'll look it up. I think his company bought The Blaze. Oh, wow. We'll talk about that after. So, how Remind is this going to, I mean, is this going to affect his show? Well, no, but it's moving the show to the right. You know what I mean? There's no more independent Glenn Beck now. He's officially, you know. Uh, Hannity, Limbaugh, the rest of them. You know what I mean? But again, I, I say it almost every article so I read. So he was having money problems. Well, Glenn Beck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, Bla the Blaze was like, oh, we're going to do, do this right. We're going to make sure we don't have any glitches. We're going to spend all this money on fancy studios and blah, blah, blah. And then next thing you know... And their, and their argument was much like yours. This way we can say what we want and we won't have to run it by anybody. Right, and, we, and it just is our content. And now they're bought by somebody who moved the blaze to the right. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, you know, you, you'll be calling me a hypocrite in four or five years. You'll be like, oh, Fred, remember when you used to say what you thought? And then somebody bought us and now you, like, have to run it up the flagpole? I'd be like, Ted, just let me die in peace. <laughs> Please just let me kill myself. You don't have to rub it in my face. So, yeah, that, that day will come too. <laughs> because you'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because like I said, I still write what I want. My wife, she goes, you should get somebody to pay you. I said, well, if they pay me, then I don't get to write what I want. You know, that's the trick. That's the catch-22. You can be poor and do whatever you want. At some point, you have to figure out how to make money. So it's almost, you like, be the when leader it's of almost like when they pay you, they're paying you to shut you up. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, once I make a little bit of money, right? Say I win that Pulitzer, right? Mm -hmm. Which ain't going to happen. But say I win that Pulitzer and I spend that uh, money to reinvest in the thing. And then a few people start watching it. I can see the comments now. Racist Fred Hunt <laughs> dragging his friend Ted into the mud. And I'll be like, I'm not racist. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you say that with enough conviction. We went back and we heard something you said number 67. I'll be like, oh, please don't go back and look at six, uh, episode 67. That wasn't our best work. So, so by Sen Hour, we made it through Glitch Fest. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll end the episode this way. We're going to test this up. Oh, do you want to do a song of the day? Do I want to do a song of the day? I don't, this always takes me by surprise. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, we can do cover of the Rolling Stone. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, let's. Do I thought that. you were gonna. I thought you were gonna just like spin the globe. As, That's what I'm gonna do. As our I'm gonna see. Yeah, we're just gonna like, spin it. What, what is that? The news of the day. Let's see. If oh it wait, did they? Camera. What was that from? Did they do that on SNL? Like or? I think at one time they did. See, we're moving the globe around. Let's see if that jams up our camera again. <laughs> See, you're doing that and Putin's looking at all those countries going by and like, I want that one. Yeah, I want Mongolia. <laughs> he don't want Mongolia. There's a bunch of sheep herders there. All right, we are done. I'm Fred Hunt. That's Ted Coley. 